Today, I'm going to talk to you about leadership principles from the Marine Corps. Hi, this is Jim Gibson from Business Sense Podcast. And today I want to talk to you about some leadership principles that can help you grow your business and generally speaking, help you in life. Now, many years ago, I was uh, in uh, officer candidate school, OCS, in Quantico, Virginia. And as I was progressing through the system near the end, they gave us the opportunity to uh, have the weekend off as long as we were back by Monday morning at formation. We were allowed to have the weekend off. And that was a Man, I tell you, when you're in OCS, you're, <laughs> you're, you're tired all the time. You don't get enough sleep. You don't get a lot of break time. So this was fantastic. So what, what I was going to do is I was going to go up to Philadelphia, where I was from and where my fiancé was, my, my uh, beautiful wife who I've been married to for almost 40 years now. And I look forward to seeing her. Man, did I look forward to seeing her. So I hopped in my car, and I drove from Quantico, Virginia, up to Philadelphia, and I stayed at her parents' house in the basement, if you know anything about East Coast houses. And we had a great time that weekend. You know, we went out to dinner on Saturday night. I was probably as thin as a rail. You know, no hair at all. I was completely bald. It was cold out. It was middle of winter. It was probably in February time frame. But what happened was we had a blizzard, and I knew we were going to have a blizzard. But I didn't do anything about it. And uh, when it came time to drive back on a Sunday afternoon back to Quantico, I went out to my car and the, the snow was up to the, or the side view mirrors. And it was, I would have to dig that thing out and it was still snowing. And so I called OCS, Officer Candidate School, and I call, talked to the duty officer of the day. And I said, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it to Quantico by tomorrow morning. I am snowed in. I am a victim. I am snowed in. And the person said, well, don't worry about it. You get back when it's safe. And I thought, yay, I get another day off with my fiance. Fantastic. I got an excuse not to be there on a Monday morning because of the snowstorm. And this is fantastic. I had a great time. You know, we spent another day. By the end of the day, you know, the... The roads were plowed, things like that, and I could drive back to Virginia, of which I did, and I showed up the next morning for a formation, and uh, there stood the uh, drill instructor. I didn't call them drill instructors for officer candidate school. By the way, officer candidate school is a lot like, uh, what would you say, boot camp for enlisted people. Uh, I think they did it as hard as they possibly could to weed out people they did not want, and, and we started with a couple hundred and ended with uh, probably about half of that by the time the school was done. So it was not easy, uh, as you would expect uh, Marine Corps programs to be. Um, so at any rate, uh, the, uh, the drill instructor, the sergeant instructor, I think they called him at the time, uh, he called out some names, and he says, everyone else, uh, let's go to uh, breakfast, and these names I called out, you follow me. And so we all followed him into a conference room. There was probably about 15 of us. I kind of thought, you know, what's this about? This is unusual. And then the major came in. He was the CO of Officer Candidate School. And this is a no-nonsense guy, as you would expect. And he had a little chit-chat with us, a little discussion that I will remember. I have remembered my whole life. And uh, he started out with, he said, you are responsible for knowing what the weather is and the getting yourself down here on time. And I'm going to hold all of you as responsible. In fact, I'm going to write up this as a disciplinary action, and it's going to go in your file. And it may stop you from getting commissioned. And I thought, how unfair that is. It wasn't my fault that the snow was, you know, it came down. It wasn't my fault there was a storm. But after our hour lecture or more, I come to realize that I am responsible. If I knew I needed to be back on Monday morning, then it was my responsibility to make sure that I knew the weather wasn't going to stop me from getting back on Monday morning. And I knew when I heard the reports about the weather, I was hoping I'd get stuck in Philadelphia. I think the answer that I gave was, I made a mistake, it's my fault, it will not happen again. And that's the best answer to give when you fail at something. 
And this is a great principle. It's a great leadership principle. Seek responsibility and take responsibility for your actions. You know, if you really want to be a leader, and that's different than management, by the way. You lead people, you manage resources, and in some cases you manage people. You know, you, you, know, you, you send the right person to the right place. It's not necessarily leadership, but leadership inspires teams. It inspires people to do a job that needs to get done. And throughout these podcasts, I'm going to be talking about all the leadership principles. One at a time, we're going to talk about them and how it applies to life. And I learned a big lesson that day. I learned a lesson that I am responsible for everything that happens or fails to happen is my responsibility. And I would say it's the same to you. You know, I, I know I heard people say, well, you know, it's not my fault. I was born this way. I've heard that a million times. Yes, it is. It's your fault. And I've also heard people say things like, well, you know, I'm at where I'm at today in life. It's because of my parents or it's because of my situation or it's because of, and you can put anything you want in there. And you know something, what really is going to hurt you is that you can't take responsibility for your actions. And if you can't take responsibilities for your actions, then you can never change anything in your life. You're always the victim. And sometimes, you know, when I'm sitting here and I watch the news and I listen to the radio and all, everybody is a victim. I don't want to be a victim. I'm not a victim. I am the result of my decisions and my actions. That's where I'm at today, and that's where you're at today. You are a result of your actions and your decisions and how you react to things. It's your responsibility. It is your fault. I remember once, many years after that, I was a captain and I was CEO of what they called Long Lines Company, which was... Um, in the Marine Corps, being a communications officer, I worked for 9th Comp Battalion. And uh, we had about 120 people, uh, Marines, that were all technicians that had different responsibilities. I had the responsibility for this whole unit, for all the staff NCOs, for all the enlisted people and everything else. And I love responsibility now. Give me responsibility and I'll take it. But in this situation, it was kind of interesting. It was interesting because I had a great senior enlisted person. He was a master gunnery sergeant. And at that point, I was like 29 years old, and he was in the Marine Corps for 30. So he was in the Marine Corps longer than I was alive. And he really knew how to handle people. He was just fantastic. He really knew leadership. He knew management. He was a great guy. And uh, I remember, you know, I would him, he and I would get together in the morning. And I would tell him everything that needed to get done. Now, most of my list was from my CO, um, who was a major. And he told me what needed to happen and what we were doing and everything else. And I had a to-do list. And so I had certain things I had to do, but I also had certain things a unit had to do and had to have done by a certain time. So I would tell this senior enlisted person about um, what needed to be done. And he would take a little book and he would write down each thing that needed to be done. And he and I would talk about how to accomplish it and things like that and everything else. And I would say, okay, um, Master Gunnery Sergeant, when you, if you have any problems, please see me before 1500, 3 p.m. I said, because I need to talk to uh, the major if there's any difficulties and I need more time on these, on these projects or, or the responsibilities that we're going to do. And he'd say, yes, sir, no problem. And he'd go out and work all day. I had things I had to do. And then if he had an issue that he couldn't accomplish all those tasks in the time frame that was given, then he'd come back to me at 1500 and tell me. Then I would know. Well, I always did half planning anyway. So if I knew something was that had to be done by Friday, then I would tell him it had to be done by Wednesday. That's half planning. It's going to save you a lot if you plan that way. Don't, don't wait to the last moment. Get it done ahead of time. So if you know you have a week to get something done, you know, take two days to do it. If you know you have a month, take two weeks to do it. Make sure it's done within two weeks. Then if you run into a problem, you have enough time to fix the problem. Well, sad to say that he injured his back and they put him on light duty bed rest. So I had, uh, you know, I had the responsibility to, I had to take his place and I had to supervise 
all the rest of the staff NCOs. These are people that have been in for uh, 6 to 15 years. They know what they're doing. They were all experts. They were also technicians. They, they knew the responsibilities of the unit. So we had our morning meeting at 7.30 in the morning, and I passed out each of the responsibilities to each person. I, I noticed that no one was writing any notes down. But I went through all my things, and I assigned different, different projects and different responsibilities and time frames to each person. And some were pretty crucial. I was told, you know, earlier that morning by the CO that certain things had to be done in, a, in a two or three days. So I knew they were kind of crucial to get done quickly. And they all said, okay. And I said, listen, gentlemen, if you have any problems, check back to me at 3 o'clock. You know, I didn't say 3 o'clock. It's 1,500. And, uh, you know, let me know of the problems you have so I can jump in and help you or I know why there's a delay or I know what's going on. So when I have the meeting tomorrow morning with the uh, major, I can keep him informed of my progress. And they said, okay, okay, no, no problem, sir. And they all left. I didn't believe them because no one took notes. If you're in a meeting with your boss, take notes. It shows disrespect if you're not taking notes. It, it shows that I'm just here because I'm supposed to and I'm not going to really take you as my boss serious. So I knew. I knew what was happening. I knew what was going to happen. So sure enough, at uh, you know, 16.30, 4.30 is when we would secure uh, that at each day. They held a formation, and uh, the senior enlisted person, not the master gunnery sergeant because he was on bed rest, but the next person who was senior put his head in my office, and he said, Sir, is there anything you want to say to the troops before they leave? And I said, No, I'm absolutely fine. Just tell all the other staff NCOs I need to see them. And they said, okay. And so we had a little meeting at, at 4.30, 16.30. And uh, they all, you know, got in their chairs in my office. And so I went around and I said, hey, gunnery sergeant, did you do this? And he said, oh, no. I wasn't able to because I had them doing, you know, work on the vehicles or something. And then I went to the staff sergeant. Staff sergeant, did you do this? And he said, oh, no, 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 no. We had to clean up this area. It took us all day. I didn't get to that. And I went around to each person, and they all had excuses of why they didn't do what I needed them to do. And I said, okay, no problem, gentlemen. No problem at all. I said, uh, what I'm going to do is um, you guys just stay. I'll be back tomorrow morning at 730, and then we can have another meeting. You can tell me how you got everything done. And they said, they got all upset, you know, they looked at me. And they said, but sir, we got things we're supposed to do tonight. And the troops aren't here, so we can't get this work done. I said, well, it's not the troops' fault. They obeyed your orders. You just didn't listen to my priorities. And you've been giving me nothing but excuses. You have forgotten to take responsibility for your actions. To seek responsibility for your actions. Don't allow someone else to give you an excuse either. You seek responsibility for your actions. I said, so gentlemen, I will see you tomorrow morning at 7.30. Now you have a list, don't you? Has anyone been taking a, a notepad down? I notice even now when I'm talking to you, no one's been taking any notes. So that means you're not taking me seriously. So that means you're just blowing me off because you're not taking any notes. So you can stay till 7.30 tomorrow morning and I'll come in. And we'll go through this list to see if you get it done. And don't ask the troops if you see them out there. Don't ask the, the, the Marines, you know, the junior enlisted Marines to come and help you because it's your fault. Because you decided that your responsibilities were more important than my responsibilities. That what I told you was not as important as what you wanted to do. You decided it. You decided to blow me off and you decided to do what you thought you wanted to do. And, you know, I could see the grumbling and the eyes going back and forth and the shuffling of the feet and everything else. And finally, the senior gunnery sergeant said, well, you know, sir, I think we got your point. He said, would you let us have one more chance? He goes, it is our responsibility. Now, if he said it's not our fault, I would have said, no, stay all night. I don't care, man. I don't care if you get all the work done. You're going to work all night until 730 the next morning. Because I have this responsibility for my boss to get these things done. I have responsibility to the major to get these things done on time. 
and you guys screwed all around doing what you thought was important rather than doing what I thought was important. And I'm the person that's responsible for this unit. And if, and what I think is important, it takes priority over what you think your priorities are. And I, and, but they didn't. They took responsibility for it. So that freed me up to trust them. That gave me the ability from there on out, I didn't have to worry about it. They said they would take care of it. It was their fault. It was not the people who worked for them. It was their fault. Their sections didn't complete the job because it was their fault. It wasn't because of the Marines because they were doing other things. They just weren't paying. Just their bosses, their staff NCOs, just weren't giving them the direction I told them in the morning to do. And I said, okay, gentlemen, because you took responsibility, let's do this one more time, as you suggest. I will be in my office tomorrow at 6, and we will talk about the things that need to get done by the end of the day tomorrow. And so at that point, 6 a.m. in the morning, 0600, as they would say, they were in my office, and I went through the list again. I noticed this time every single person had a pen and a piece of paper. And you know what happened? They got everything done that day. But they also learned a big lesson, that it wasn't the troops' fault, it was their fault. And it's the same thing in life. Where you're at today isn't because someone else has done something to you. Maybe they did. Maybe it was unfair in your eyes. But the bottom line is you have to take responsibility for your life. You cannot blame circumstances, your parents, your mom, the school you went to, uh, anything else. It is your responsibility. I had a company um, that I worked for as a contractor, of course, you know, as, as, as a cable company at the time. And uh, they were almost guaranteed work. It seemed like every week they would call us up to do more work in different industries that they or different buildings that they had. And, uh, of course, we would... Uh, Go out and do the work, the cabling, add a jack here, add a jack there. And um, I know I got a call one morning, Monday morning, or the head of IT called me up and he said, Jim, why don't you come out and visit me? And I said, okay, hopped in the car and went on out there and he pulled me in the conference room and he said, by the way, um, I just want to show you that jack on the wall. He said, jack on the wall and the jack was horrible. It was crooked. It was six inches higher than all the other jacks in the room. Rather than use the label machine that I gave the guy, he used a Sharpie and he wrote a cable number on it. And he says, you know, I, I know this is a really nice uh, conference room and everything else. And uh, he said, but you know, I had a big meeting on Saturday and I asked you to put this jack uh, in there and hook it up to a certain telephone line. And uh, when we tried to use it on Saturday, the conference call with the owner of the corporation and some of the board members we couldn't get it to work he said and I found out why it doesn't work it's because it's not hooked up so I apologized to him I said you know I'm sorry um, and I took full responsibility for it and everything else and it really was my fault because I knew that the, the guy I employed had a really bad attitude he was this sloppy and everything he did and i I, I was getting lazy because I did not want to fire him, and then I had to hire someone new, and I had to train someone new and everything else. So it was 100% my fault. And when I talked to the uh, employee about it, and I said, uh, you know, I said, what did you do, man? And uh, he said, well, I just put the jack on the walls in a hurry. And I said, yeah, well, it's pretty sloppy uh, work. And I said, on top of that, you didn't hook it up to the phone system. He goes, I don't see it as a cable or my responsibility to hook up those cables to a phone system. Well, I fired him, which I should have. And, of course, I never heard from that company again. So that repeat business that I was getting all the time, I lost. And you know whose fault it was? It wasn't that technician's because I knew he was sloppy. Even if I didn't know he was sloppy, it wasn't his fault. It was my fault. 100% my fault that I lost that customer. Now, I knew that he wasn't a really good employee. I knew he was arrogant. 
I knew he was sloppy, and I shouldn't have kept him, but I was lazy. I know I should have had someone else go out and check the work. I know it should have been tested. I know all those things, so I deserve to be fired by that customer. It was my responsibility. It was my fault. I took the responsibility for that. You know, it seems like in life everyone has an excuse. And you want to find a real loser? It's someone that's always blaming someone else for their failures. Because if you blame someone else for your failures, you put them in control of your life. You put them in control of your future. But if you decide that you're going to control your future, then you have to take responsibility for the decisions you make and what happens to you, even if they're not your decisions. I didn't decide to put that jack in crooked. I didn't decide to use that Sharpie. And worse yet, I didn't decide not to test it. It's still my responsibility. And you know something? I suffered the consequences because of it, which I should. You know, the best thing you can say when someone points out a failure, first of all, you should take responsibility for it. But the best thing you should say is, it's my fault. It won't happen again. Because when I would talk to people who I was hoping would take responsibility for actions or the employees I put under them, they would say, well, you know, it was Joe's fault. It was this person's fault. It rained. Uh, it was, uh, you know, a, a bad day. And I knew that they weren't managers. They weren't leaders. Because leaders take responsibility. How can, you can, how can you have someone work for you as a manager or a leader? And at the same time, they don't take responsibility for the actions. How can you solve the action? If I can't get someone to own it, to own the problem, or to own the solution, because they're always blaming someone else. It's out of their control. They can't handle it. And if they had this or if they had that, you know, if they grew up in a different neighborhood, if they had a different college education, if they had money to go to college, that's a story for another day. If they only had money to go to college, why, they would have been better in life. Everyone has an excuse and they all stink. And you know, when you look at excuses, excuses only satisfy the person giving them. If you want to be successful in life, seek responsibility and take responsibility for your actions. When it comes to seeking responsibility, that means saying, I'll take care of that, sir. I'll take care of that, ma'am. I'll take care of that, boss. Let me handle that responsibility in, in your business. Let me handle that. Or to the customer, customer, I'll take care of that responsibility for you. I'll do this job for you. I will make sure that this is done. Of course, it also loans itself into the other thing that you have to close the loop. If you take responsibility, then when the job is done, you got to report back that it's done in a reasonable time frame. You always have to keep informed. You have to over-communicate. But the bottom line is everyone has an excuse. Don't be like everyone else. You're going to end up like everyone else. Seek responsibility and take responsibility for your actions. And you're going to do a lot better in life. You'll do a lot better in business. And you'll be a better manager and a better leader that people can trust and rely upon because they've taken responsibility. They know that even if there's a failure in that area, you will make sure that it's right, that it's made right. Well, as obviously I finished OCS, I graduated and I got commissioned. It's a great time in my life. But I do remember that we had steps in the building, the barracks. Of course, civilians call them steps. When you're in the Marine Corps or the Navy, it's called a ladder. And I remember walking up that ladder every day to the, to the, the we were on the top floor. And underneath each step, between the steps, they had stenciled the leadership principles and the leadership traits. So I would say them over and over and over again. And I'll tell you what, that was the best education I've ever got. That was a lot better than, than my uh, master's in business administration. Because it not only helped me with business, it also helped me with life. And where I failed in business, 
was because I usually broke those leadership rules. Well, again, this is Jim Gibson with Business Sense. And I often end these things by saying timidity is not a virtue, but I want to turn that around today. I want to say get out there and be aggressive. Get out there, be aggressive, be dangerous. Get the job done. Take responsibility for the things in your life and how they uh, work out and how they don't work out. But you can always learn from your mistakes. They're the best teachers, man. The hardest teachers, but they're the best teachers. So you learn and you move on. So go and be dangerous. Thank you for listening.